During an OSINT investigation, discovering a person's screen name can lead to a lot of information. Today, we'll check out a tool called Sherlock that hunts down user accounts across a vast variety of websites on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. During an OSINT investigation, our goal is to stitch together as many potentially disconnected clues as possible into one coherent picture. Now, Sherlock does this by allowing us to take a single piece of information, a username, and expand it into as many different connected accounts as it can find. Now, this can come with their own clues and details like photos, audio, video, and other accounts that might be connected and involve a little bit less security than the ones we should initially find. So Sherlock is an amazing tool for being able to expand an investigation into other accounts that we otherwise would have no hope of finding. Now, Sherlock can also be used to generate a list of possible accounts based on someone's name and then run down, run down which ones might actually be connected to your target. In order to use it, you'll just need to have Python 3 installed, which is cross-platform and should be able to be run on any computer you're using. If you have any questions on how to install this, you can check out the Nullbyte link in the description, which has a lot of different troubleshooting in case you run into any errors. Once you have Python set up, then we're ready to begin. To get started with Sherlock, you can navigate to the GitHub page here at github.com slash Sherlock project slash Sherlock. If you scroll down, you can see the documentation is pretty straightforward, and we'll just need to clone the GitHub repository, uh, cd into the directory, and then do a pip3 install of requirements.txt. So let's go ahead and first do the git clone, and in my case, it already exists, and then we'll cd into Sherlock, and then ls, and we can see all the various things that have been loaded, most importantly, the setup. So here back in the installation, you can see the correct syntax is pip3 install tacr requirements.txt. And we can go ahead and run this and it should go ahead and install all the library, libraries that are required for all the various websites that Sherlock will be reaching out to in order to see whether or not a user account exists. So here you can see the general usage is python3 sherlock.py uh, and then just the username that we're looking for. And we can do some more uh, interesting things like do it through Tor um, or uh, maybe output to the like JSON file. But for now, we're going to be straight, pretty straightforward and just going after a couple examples as though we were doing an OSINT investigation and so just start turning over some clues and seeing what we can learn. All right, so let's get started. And now that we are in the folder and we also have Sherlock installed, we can go ahead and run from our example python3 sherlock.py and then we just insert a username. So who are we going to look up first? All right, so I did a little bit of thinking and based on some feedback from uh, our production assistant, we're going to go first with Neil Breen. Neil Breen is a visionary, uh, some say legendary producer of videos that have been a great inspiration to our production assistant, Nick. So we're gonna go ahead and run it first and see what kind of information we can pull up on Neil Breen. So Sherlock uh, will go ahead and go to all these different, uh, uh, some of these are Crunchyroll, they're all of these social media and other sorts of websites that have accounts, and it will check to see whether or not a user account exists that matches exactly the one that you've input. Now, typically somebody will have a favorite screening that they use all over the internet. So this tool is particularly effective at gathering all these into one place so that we can check them out one by one and see if there's any clues that could help us better identify who this person is. So we can already see that there's some information that might not be authentic to this person. Uh, I am led to understood that this person is popular on the internet. So this nine gag account is probably probably not them. But if we go back to some other stuff that's a little bit older, we can begin to find some things that could be helpful in understanding this person. So let's go ahead and check out, this is an older gentleman, so maybe eBay might be a good place to start. Now taking this URL, let's go ahead and navigate to one that we found while the scan completes, and we'll see whether or not we can find some useful information. Uh, here we can see this account was created in 2014, and I guess this guy got more popular last year, so this is probably authentic. And we can see some reviews of products that this person looks like they've bought. 
Now, if we scroll down, we can see Neil Breen likes cat food. He likes this wig. Um, he does not like this glow necklace. Uh, and we can see some other things he's decorated to house with or that he is generally interested in, which could be really interesting depending on what that person is actually buying. Now, unlike services like Amazon, where you just kind of buy things directly, uh, this actually allows you to see all the different things that this person has bought and then left reviews on directly from their screen name. So that allows us to quickly find it from this tool rather than having to dig through um, uh, a bunch of different uh, various like things through their user profile or maybe dig through, I don't know, something else. So as we go through, it looks like, wow, there's a lot of stuff and the scan is now done. So if we type ls again, we should see a new nealbreen.txt and we can just nano nealbreen.txt to get a list of all the stuff that we found. All right, so some of these things are probably people that have jumped on the bandwagon of this guy's name. In particular, I don't think that um, github.com slash nealbreen, I don't know that nealbreen is a big developer. I could be wrong, I don't know. But some of these other things like, uh, for example, Venmo could be very interesting. Now by default, Venmo payments are public, meaning while this particular person might not yield any information, this is still something that could allow us to see who they're paying and who exactly is kind of in this person's circle of influence. Now I'm sorry, Christopher Proctor, I'm sure you didn't mean to show up on our show, but you shouldn't have stolen Neil Breen's name if you didn't want to appear in searches for him. So in this case, it didn't lead to any information, but in a lot of cases, I've seen a lot of Venmo payments that can teach us a little bit about who the person is interacting with. And especially payments are sensitive because they could lead to business information or some other things like identifying members of a company. Now, I'm gonna not spend too much more time on Neil Breen because I think you get the general understanding, but any one of these could lead to more information. And for a typical person who isn't a celebrity or famous on, I guess, 9gag and Reddit, uh, then you could really learn a lot of information about that particular individual. Now let's pick somebody else. We're gonna pick John McAfee. Let's see what we can find uh, just using Sherlock to understand maybe which accounts could be tied to him specifically and which ones are probably not legitimately from him. So if we go back up to our command, all we really need to do is substitute out the other screening we wanna look for, official John McAfee, and this should get to work finding as many different accounts as we can tie to this particular name. Now, already we're seeing some pretty, uh, some pretty promising stuff. Uh, we can see there's an Instagram account. Um, Google Plus, I think, has been shut down now, but uh, we have an LO. We have a blog spot. That sounds great. Let's check this out and see if we have any content. So back in our browser window. Unfortunately, it looks like this is being redirected somewhere else, which is very sad, but maybe this new website could actually lead to information. If we were actually doing uh, some OSINT, of course, we could just do, provided this is, nope, it's not done. Uh, in a new window, we could just do who is that, and then find out you know, exactly who registered it, whether or not this was tied to Mr. McAfee, and uh, we can see the organization is Micronesia Investment and uh, Development Corporation. I'm, I'm not gonna touch that. I don't know what that's about. But either way, this is a really interesting tool for being able to pull together these things so we can track down these leads one by one and figure out which ones might lead to more information and which ones might be kind of a dead end. Now, obviously, uh, something like TradingView or other things that could lead to information about finances, this is all really interesting because for a pen tester or somebody that's looking for vulnerabilities, it gives a lot of, um, oh, here we go. It gives a lot of information about a person's personal life, the things they engage in, the interests they have, and generally kind of what they're interested in uh, that gives us a level of understanding of them that maybe a typical investigation might not immediately overturn. Now, of course, there are a couple different types of false positives that will come up with this. And the most common is, of course, a misattribution where somebody is either using that screen name but not actually that person, or otherwise, uh, if it's a celebrity or someone who's more popular, you might get a lot of copycats that generally interfere with your results. Now, the way that this is written, you generally uh, will see a better reliability than some other tools that just check to see whether or not that exists. Um, but in general, this is a great tool for being able to determine whether or not uh, a user's screen name exists all over the internet, or if maybe it's concentrated in a couple different sites. 
Now here we finally finished and we've already just by checking a couple of these seen that we've found some uh, different accounts that the person's putting out media from. So if you type Alice again, we can see there should now be a official, uh, official McAfee. So if we nano official McAfee, uh, we have a short list of all the 12 websites we were able to find. So if you have a screen name for an individual, this is probably one of the best ways you can quickly check to see where you might be able to dig up more information and maybe take the next step in your OSINT investigation. During an OSINT investigation, the value of tools like Sherlock is to pull in lots of different tools from even a single hit. If we find an account that has a photo, we can reverse image search it and potentially find other accounts that are linked. And if we find a description, we can look for specific instances of the exact same words to find where the person might have copied and pasted the same description of themselves. All these things taken together can lead to a dramatic image of a person that might be a little bit more intimate than we would be able to get if we otherwise were just gathering information from just random clues. So a username can really bridge the gap when it comes to understanding a person, who they hang out with, and which accounts they have accessible for gathering further clues. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any questions on setting up Sherlock, you can check out the article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.